Up next, we have virtual analog. And for me, virtual analog is really when you have an instrument that clearly is taking its cues from the past. So it has a familiar signal flow to you. So for example, you can see we have an oscillator section, we have an LFO section, we have amplitude envelopes, we have a filter, we have some effects like a chorus. Those are all things that we've seen on older analog synthesizers, right? Like that's nothing new to us. But at the same time, when I look at this instrument, for example, we have the Access Virus, which is probably the most popular example I could think of of something that exists in hardware. So for that reason, it's not really virtual, but the idea is the same. I look at this, I see a lot of familiar controls, but I couldn't pinpoint what instrument this is really trying to model. But at the same time, it's trying to go for that sound and every single company company has a unique take on that. And that's kind of what's important here. So the most popular example of something that I would consider to be virtual analog would be Silent. You look at Silent, clearly it's trying to sound like an old analog synthesizer, but you can't tell which one. And if you can't easily pinpoint which instrument it's taking its cues from, whether it's like a Juno, a Prophet 5, a Mini Moog, whatever, an Oberheim synthesizer like we saw, if you can't easily tell, then I lump that into the virtual analog category. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about digital, and so I'll explain the difference there. But I've included this picture here of the Access Virus or also something like the Nord Lead because it's really what set off this whole trend of getting into virtual analog and eventually going into the computer. And like I said before, every single company listens to and has studied these old analog synthesizers and they come up with their own algorithms and their own ideas about what is going to sound best so what kind of filter is really going to sound good what about the oscillator section what about these envelopes and that's why you listen to them all and they sound completely different from one another you listen to silent and then you listen to something like spire and you can tell they're two very different instruments and then you listen to something like you he's diva Clearly, the, with the interface and everything, it's trying to look like and um, is taking its cues from old analog synthesizers. But at the same time, you can't really pinpoint it. It's not that obvious to you. And they're trying to improve on it in a, in a different way. So they want to give you something that's going to be more usable, more flexible. You have the added benefits of digital, plus you have their own ideas about what kind of makes that perfect analog sound but it all exists inside the computer. It's all virtual and therefore virtual analog. Now we're gonna take a look at the virtual analog freeware synthesizer that you can all use inside of your digital audio workstation, Yuhi's Tyrell N6. And when I load this up, it's pretty obvious to me that this is a virtual analog synthesizer for a lot of reasons. Just the interface itself is very indicative of that. So we have like the rack mount going on. You can see that the background here is like this gray metal sort of background as if there have been different sorts of wear on this instrument. But at the same time, I couldn't tell you exactly what analog instrument this is supposed to represent. And if somebody asked me, what would you describe this sound as? I would probably say it has a very like Yuhi sound about it. And that sounds really weird, but if you use any of the other Yuhi instruments, there's like a distinctive sound across all of them because at the core of the instruments, they're probably using similar algorithms specifically for things like the oscillators and like the filters. So this instrument reminds me a lot of like the Diva, the Batsilla, the Ace, um, zebra. It just kind of has this very distinctive Yuhi sound. And it's not as if that's good or bad. It just, it works where in some cases that's going to fit a track really well. And in other cases, it just may not work at all. So this is the sound that comes in, um, when it's in its initialized state. And what I think I might want to do is actually create the same sort of sound I created for the OBXD. Like always, if you get confused about some of the things I'm doing and controls I'm moving, go back to the first course and watch the videos on synthesis. And if you're still confused, feel free to ask questions. But one thing you should notice from synthesizer to synthesizer is we're seeing a lot of the same controls. We're seeing a blocked out section for oscillators. We're seeing all of our modulators here at the bottom. We have our LFOs, a modulation matrix, which we probably don't even need to use in this case. We have our two different envelopes. And at the bottom, we have an effect. All right, so it's really straightforward. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna change this from poly mode into um, mono mode. I could also go legato, 
which would mean that when I play over notes, I could get like a glide effect kind of. If I pull this up, so let's do a more extreme example. You can hear it glide up as compared to going. But if I had glide enabled and then I was on mono mode, it's gonna actually do that pitch slide. Which I don't want in this instance. So I'm gonna go to legato, but just put a very short kind of glide time on it. Nothing too major. One thing I'm gonna do also at the top is I have the ability to go to eight voices, just like what we saw in the OBXD. All right, so if I'm in mono mode or in legato mode, it's actually going to just stack all those voices on top of each other. And then drift, this is a telltale sign that this is a virtual analog instrument. Drift is actually going to put all of those different voices slightly out of tune, just like what happens with a real analog synthesizer. With those real things, it's very difficult to keep all of the oscillators perfectly in tune with one another. And over time, they tend to drift apart. And so it gives that really nice kind of like silky widening effect. I don't know how to explain it without us listening to it. So we can take a listen to it now. And always keep an eye on your meter as well. We're getting a little loud there. And if I want, I can even detune all those voices further. So this instrument is really putting emphasis on things like the drift and on the detune. And that's telling you virtual analog right there because that's a very analog synthesizer characteristic. So One other thing to note about Yuhi instruments, I wouldn't normally say this because this is just specific to one brand, but in this case, it's important. When you want to fine tune a control, you have to start holding down shift before you actually click that control. So if I'm holding down shift, I can now fine tune this, but if you hold down shift and then click on it, it won't work. So, or I should say if you're moving it and then you hold down shift, it's not gonna fine tune. So now we have this locked in. So we have our mixer setting. Let's just work with oscillator one for now. It's at a saw wave right now. Let's go ahead and turn that to a square wave. Or the beauty of this instrument is that we can go somewhere in between. And then if I want, I can actually take the pulse width of that square wave or of the wave we're creating and move it around a little bit. And you can see that it's in the oscillator modulation section and it's linked up to LFO2, which is down here. So let's bring that up. We can control the rate. And we could change the shape if we wanted. I'm fine with using triangle for right now. Let's start to bring in some of oscillator two. Maybe let's tune that up a little bit. Up an octave. So 12 semitones. And then ever so slightly fine tune that out. All right, so we have our basic sound here. We have our block. So this is a subtractive synth, which means what do we need to look for next? Uh-huh, the filter. We have that block right there. So this works exactly like the OBXD, just that we have a slider as compared to a knob. So right now I'm working with a low pass filter. And the reason I know that is, first of all, if I pull down the cutoff, we're gonna hear the highs go away and the lows stay in. So that's a low pass. But also what's going on here is just like the OBXD, we actually have uh, two different filters that could be activated right now. And that's controlled with this filter mix. So if I take this all the way up to the top, what it means is I'm now working in high pass mode. So you can see we have VCF mode, LP, HP. So I won't really hear anything right now. But as I bring this down, we'll just hear the high frequencies and we start to bring in low frequencies. But for this sound, I want to work with a low pass filter. So we'll switch that back. Add a little resonance. 
We can even go up to a 36 dB per octave, which we couldn't do with the OBXD. We only had 12 and 24. So let's go with 36 just for fun. All right, the next thing I need to do is actually control the amplitude envelope of this sound. And you'll see here we have this setting that says VCA. That stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. AKA, it stands for the amplifier and the amplitude envelope. And it's telling me that it's working with ADSR1. Here is ADSR1, AKA envelope number one. So I could add some velocity here, velocity sensitivity. So let's go all the way up so you can really hear it. Uh, but I would actually put that probably somewhere in the middle for this sound. And let's create another kind of a plucky sound. So. So I'm happy with that. Now I just need to add in a little bit of movement with that filter. So I'm going to go up to my filter here and we can see that the modulator number one is actually hardwired to ADSR2, which is syncing up to this one. And so this is going to impact our filter cutoff here. So let's go ahead and bring this up. Now we just have to get this uh, envelope working really well with this first one. Not very hard. You almost use identical settings. Let's get a little more volume out of this guy. And one other thing I can bring in is a sub oscillator, which we didn't see before. So let's go ahead and turn that on and see what it does to the sound. Try the other pole filters here. So just enough to the point where I can hear it without it being too obvious that's in. And the final part about this synthesizer, which is fantastic, is that we have a chorus effect built in. So this is really going to widen it out. This is a classic effect on some older analog synthesizers to take them from being very mono, very central, to being spread way out. And with modern pop music today, you're going to find almost always that the instruments themselves are very stereo to leave room for a bass or for um, a voice in the mono channel. So let's turn this on and mess around with it a little bit. It's going to make a big difference. <laughs> So I don't want this to be too extreme. We have a rate control right here and a depth control. Can we go down an octave? No. But we have three different chorus types we can use, classic, dramatic, and ensemble. Eh. I think classic is going to be best here. We can make this a little bit more drastic. One thing 
I'm actually doing subconsciously, which uh, I just want to point out to you is that I'm trying to actually lock in a sound that works really well for this instrument. I'm finding that the sort of pluck sound I'm going for that I got with the OBXD simply cannot be replicated with this instrument with the settings that I have. So you have to play to the instrument strengths. And this all comes down to just working with something longer and longer and longer. So if we compare now this instrument, to what we had with the OBXD. You can hear that the tone is very different despite the fact that the sound itself is somewhat similar. The last thing I wanna tell you about the Tyrell N6 is that we have a decent number of presets that we can actually go through. And with instruments like this, I always recommend looking at the presets because it's very helpful for your development when there's not a lot of settings. And sometimes even if you're in a pinch, using a preset isn't always a bad thing. So let's just see if we can find something interesting. Here is OBX strings one. So, okay, we were just working with an OBX synthesizer before. Let's put that in. Let's go up a couple octaves. And then once we have this, we can actually go in and mess around with some of the settings so we can make it a little more to our liking. So this is screaming chorus to me. Let's bring the voice count up a little bit. I totally add a nice lush reverb behind this, but we can even get experimental and start working with things like the ring modulator. So let's hear what that sounds like if we bring it in. No change right now, but let's go over to the actual ring mod setting and I'm gonna go with numbers one and two. So that should be a little bit more extreme now. Especially as I tune number two different from number one. Shift that up a little bit. Maybe I shifted it too extreme. So you can hear just like that, that there is a lot you can do with this instrument. It can go all over the board. You can work with presets. You can start from scratch, but this definitely is a virtual analog synthesizer.